I don't know. I'm not looking to make this some kind of reoccurring thing, uh, but I just have a lot of stuff that I've gotten recently that uh, it's just kind of weird, and uh, I just kind of want to talk about a lot of it. Not necessarily, like, uh, not, none of this stuff is necessarily related, uh, most of it, at least. Um, you know, I just kind of want to talk about a lot of this stuff that I, I've kind of just wanted to pick up, and, and I have picked up, that uh, I just think is kind of weird, and I kind of want to talk about it. And this is the this is the first thing, it's Finding Nemo Escape to the Big Blue! Uh, this is kind of, uh, this is a part of, like, some of those weird license games from, well, you know, th this era, you know, the DS wasn't necessarily, like, big into this stuff, but at least, like, Game Boy Advance, GameCube, PS2 era, or, like, I remember, uh, there, there was a lot of, like, kids' movies that would get sequels, or at least, like, follow-ups, uh, on those consoles. Remember, like, uh, you know, The Incredibles had The Incredibles Rise of the Underminer, and then you had Chicken Little, like, something with that. Uh, Shrek 2 had one, uh, and, uh, of course, we also have Finding Nemo, Escape to the Big Blue, where it's, like, it's based on Finding Nemo, but it's, it's its own kind of entity, I guess. And, uh, this is just weird, because, uh, there are multiple versions of this game, and, uh, I wanted to get them all because, uh, I didn't know, <laughs> I didn't know what they were. So, uh, this was an older DS game. I believe this came out around 2007. Well, I'll be damned, it says 2004 right here, which is a fancy way of saying 2006. And, uh, yeah, it was released by THQ, and, uh, you know, we have screenshots on the back. And then, the special edition released around 2012. This one for the 3DS, and also the DS. So yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Thought that was just kind of funny. Like, they re-released the DS game from 2006, labeled it a special edition. Uh, there are some differences, but uh, I believe these are pretty much the same games, but it also released on the 3DS, uh, which uh, I, I, I do want to see what this is all about. But yeah, I believe I own uh, every copy of Finding Nemo Escape to the uh, Big Blue. Uh, mainly because, I, I don't know, I just, I, I found it weird. It's even weirder, uh, I have, uh, the, uh, Sonic Extreme merch now. Uh, yeah, so Sonic Extreme was a, uh, pretty infamous canceled Sonic game for the Sega Saturn. Uh, and I didn't know about this recently, but, uh, a lot of Sonic Extreme merch release, uh, regardless of the game not releasing. Yeah, so I got this book, and, uh, I also have... Uh, the Sonic Extreme Walkie Talkies. Uh, there's nothing really about any of these pieces of merch that uh, are really that indicative of, uh, of Sonic Extreme, the, the actual game. Uh, this one says, uh, oh, check out Sonic's new look. And uh, Sonic Extreme kind of had this weird branding thing going on where it's kind of like these black uh, neon esque uh, art designs. The book, I, I haven't even read any of this book, uh, but... Uh, it looks like it's mainly taking inspiration from the, uh, the Sonic cartoons at the time. Like, you have, like, uh, I know those characters are from, like, the cartoons or, uh, maybe some of the comics. Uh, mainly recognize some of them from, like, the cartoons from what I know about, like, the Sonic Sat AM and Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog stuff. But Bunny Rabot is in danger. I believe that is a character from Sonic Sat AM. Um, so, uh, yeah. I don't know, I just found it weird to get merch based on a cancelled Sonic game. Obviously, it doesn't matter because, like, these, you know, like, what, are these walkie-talkies gonna spoil anything about Sonic Extreme? Like, these are just branded as Sonic Extreme because that was the game Sega wanted to advertise at the time. And Sonic is a pretty popular, like, merch, merchandising franchise. Um, so, th this didn't have to be branded as Sonic Extreme, but, uh, you know, they could have just called it Sonic the Hedgehog, the book! Um, but they labeled it as Sonic Extreme just to kind of, you know, drum up hype for Sonic Extreme. Um, but it didn't even matter if the, uh, you know, if, if the game released or not, because you could just make the argument, it's just like, oh, these are just Sonic Extreme walkie-talkies! I don't know, I just found that kind of neat, and, uh, I found these available on eBay, so it's just like that feeling of like, well... Why not? I don't know. I, I like getting, like, games that are kind of, like, the, like, you know, like, stragglers. Like, you know, like, damn, this series has been releasing on this platform for a long time. You know, this is a 20... This is an MLB 2011 The Show. And it released on PS2, you know? This was a PS3 game, and, you know, it's releasing kind of late. 
And, you know, these are never really, like, that expensive or anything. But, uh, I don't know. I always find it just kind of fun to pick these games up and see, like, how far they've come along on these platforms. Uh, though most of the time, like, these are usually, like, pretty pretty bad versions, at least, like, the, the final releases on the platform. Um, you know, just because, like, they, they strip a lot of features because, you know, the PlayStation 2 version of MLB 11, the show, is more so, like, there to check a box rather than being made from the ground up for the PlayStation 2. It's the same reason why I wanted to get Just Dance 2018. Uh, this is the last PS3, uh, PS3 version of the game, which, uh, you know, other versions stuck in there a lot, a lot longer. You know, the Wii, you know, the Wii infamously got Just Dance 2020. Um, but I think the PS3 kind of, kind of, uh, dropped out of Just Dance a little sooner just because, like, I, I don't know, it just seemed like the least popular, least effective way to play Just Dance. You know, with Xbox, you have, uh, the Kinect with the Wii, it was just everybody owned a Wii. Uh, the PlayStation 3, it just kind of felt like, you know, yeah, you had the PlayStation Move, but you ever use a PlayStation Move on the PlayStation 3? It's annoying. Like, so much of that damn controller was designed to be like, oh man, we're gonna get the casuals with this, with this thing. But it's like, to, to even control the menus with the thing is a nightmare. To be fair, I believe around this time was when, uh, Ubisoft allowed you to use, like, a smartphone to, to, uh, control, uh, Just Dance. But, uh, still, you know, the PS3 was, in my opinion, kind of the least effective platform for Just Dance. So, uh, it's fair that 2018 was the last year, um, or 2017, because, you know, these released the year before and call it the year the next year. <laughs> but it's fair that this was the last one that, uh, Ubisoft released on the PS3. But, uh, I don't know. I kind of like these yearly, uh, yearly games, uh, getting kind of the last one for, uh, for the respective consoles. I don't know. I kind of like it. I don't know. I kind of like it. Uh, the Office PC game. Premium casual games. Thank you. Uh, this is a very odd one. Um, back in the day, I would browse Wikipedia a lot, and, uh, that's how I found a lot of different things. Uh, you know, you know, it's something where I think a lot of people do this, where it's just like, you kind of just are dicking around on Wikipedia, you go down a rabbit hole, and you're, like, reading a page for a TV show that you've never heard of, and, it's just like 20 years old and only got two episodes, whatever. Um, you know, as a kid, I, I was like, oh man, The Office is a popular show. I go in there, oh my god, there's a video game, and then I click on it. And this is it. And I've never seen this anywhere but eBay. And uh, it just looks like kind of like a Diner Dash kind of game. Where it's just like, uh, you know, they have an overhead view of The Office. And uh, I don't know, you just, you, you do stuff. This is when pretty much like... Ever, you know, like, PC games were popular in the sense of, like, you know, like, people would play games on their PC, and it, it was a lot of, like, people that, you know, you don't associate with gaming on their PC. You know, like, I had a lot of PC games, but they were mainly, like, oh, game shows and, and board games in the form of PC games. I played Diner Dash a lot on my PC, you know, like, a lot of people, a lot of casual games were on PC, and a lot of people played PC games back then, whereas now, a lot of the people that would play those games on PC, I think they've kind of shifted over to mobile, and, and PC gaming has kind of reclaimed the, uh, the entity of for hardcore people only. Have you tried playing a PC game? It's f***ing terrifying. Uh, but yeah, I thought this was just an interesting, dumb game to own, much like... I don't know. These are PAL-exclusive, uh, Vita games. Uh, actually, I think I think uh, a lot of these, even maybe even all of them, I believe, uh, released in North America, but only digitally. Uh, but yeah, these are uh, weird PAL exclusive, physically that is, um, Vita games that Sony themselves publish. Like these are all Sony published games, and uh, they're all for a more casual market. Obviously, you know, like with licenses like Looney Tunes and the Muppets, but uh, you also have uh, PlayStation Vita Pets. Uh, these are just really bizarre to me because, uh, Sony published them, they're pretty much only available in Europe, and they came out kinda later in the Vita's life. I almost feel like Sony was trying to see if the Vita had one last breath as kind of a casual platform. I don't know why they think that, but there you go. This wasn't like making, like, games like this for the Game Boy Advance, you know? Like, when a game released on the Vita, you know, like, this was when, you know, like, you had to put some effort and you had to put some production values behind your games if you were making kind of a retail release, a licensed game for the Vita. 
It's not like he could just kind of fart out something like he could on the Game Boy Advance, like, oh man, let's make a let's make a Shrek 2 game. There you go. Like, you know, like it's obvious like those could be made for like a very small budget and just kind of like, ah, hey, put that out, whatever. No, Vita games are a bit different. Like, you know, obviously there's a big indie scene, but when you're making like a game like these, like there has to be more substantial, you know, like there's voice acting that goes into this. There's 3D modeling. There's all this stuff. And the Vita, you know, is nearing HD quality graphics. So it's just like, it's just weird to me that like games like this would only kind of release retail wise in Europe. And, and they take a chance on releasing these games as exclusive PS Vita games. Like these are Vita exclusives pretty much. Uh, I think PlayStation Vita Pets may have made it to mobile, which... It's not PlayStation Vita Pets then! But it's weird that, you know, like, they'd fund, like, Vita-exclusive games like this and not, like, at least, like, try to make their money back on, like, making a PS4 version or or even, like, a 3DS version or something like that. I don't know. It's just... It, it, it's it's weird. But these aren't uh, nearly as weird. I mean, they're Japanese imports, so it's just, like, why, why would I have these? I'm not allowed to own these, but... Still, I finally got a couple of uh, Japan exclusive, mostly, uh, N64 games. Animal Crossing, the original Animal Crossing game, and uh, Custom Robo, which is uh, really weird. You know, we only know this as a GameCube game, and uh, same with Animal Crossing, kinda. But uh, yeah, these are really cool to finally own. But uh, I also wanted to get F-Zero X, which we did get here in North America. But uh, I have the N64DD, and I have the F-Zero X expansion kit, and I needed a Japanese copy of F-Zero X, so finally. Speaking of Japanese-only stuff, Street Fighter 2. Oh, wow. Street Fighter 2 on the PS1? No, Street Fighter 2 the movie. So there was an anime movie uh, adaptation of Street Fighter 2, and uh, this is not Street Fighter 2 on the PS1. This is literally the Street Fighter 2 movie, but... Uh, interactive so i assume like button prompts come up every now and then where it's like oh man dodge and it just plays the movie and you have to hit like left or something at the right time uh yeah i just wanted this it's interesting because uh you know there's that whole joke of uh the street fighter movie the game uh that was released on like ps1 and sega saturn and all that and in arcades uh well how about street fighter the, the game the movie Literally, Street Fighter 2, the movie, the game. So you have Street Fighter, the movie, the game, and then you have Street Fighter 2, the movie, the interactive, the interactive movie, the game. It's a weird time. Speaking of movie games, uh, I'm kind of getting into uh, the Nuon. Who isn't? These are very obscure games for a very obscure console. So the new one, uh, you know, the PlayStation 2 was pretty much like a game system that played movies. Uh, the new one was kind of a DVD player that played games. So they kind of went after the whole reason why the PlayStation 2 was so successful, as in this was a DVD player that also had the ability to play games. And uh, there were some movies that specifically released um, for the new one that uh, kind of had more interactivity. So it was kind of a DVD player with more interactivity baked in where, uh, yeah, it could play games and uh, all that. I don't know much about it, but I do own a lot of these games. Uh, interestingly, uh, Tempest 3000 released on it. So Tempest is an Atari game. So you had Tempest, the arcade game, and then Tempest 2000 was an Atari Jaguar game. And then the sequel to that, Tempest 3000, was a Nuon game. And then there's there's like a Tempest 4000 that released on modern platforms like the PlayStation 4. A lot of people don't know about Tempest 2000. Uh, you know, temp you know, a lot of those Atari brands aren't necessarily the most well-known stuff these days. But at the very least, you have the ability to play Tempest 4000. And Tempest 2000 you might know about. But uh, yeah, there is a little middle title in the middle there, only on the Nuon. Why? But then you also have Space Invaders XL. Uh, it looks like Space Invaders. But uh, yeah, it seems like the new one was capable of uh, slightly more advanced graphics. We have a game called Iron Soldier 3. Uh, I'm not actually sure uh, about uh, Iron Soldier 1 and 2. I assume those were games on actual platforms. After looking it up, uh, Iron Soldier 1 and 2 were Atari Jaguar games. So, no. But Iron Soldier 3 was actually a PS1 game, so uh, it, it only released on the PS1 and the new one. Okay. And then you have Ballistic. I, I don't know. Presented by Samsung. I don't even have a new one player at the moment, so uh, these are just kind of because I thought uh, 
I just think this is really weird. This is such weird, and, and a lot of these are still sealed, so I still, I have some work to do. But, uh, yeah, this is definitely one of the most obscure video game consoles of all time. Uh, if you want to get obscure video games, uh, I don't think you can get that much more obscure than the new one. If your answer was, what about the N-Gage? I mean, everybody knows about this. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking about kind of getting some more N-Gage games. Uh, I don't know, I've been buying a lot of games like new on games. I've been getting into the Gizmondo, which, you know, once again, who isn't? But uh, yeah, I recently got Super Monkey Ball. I thought this is such just a interesting thing. Uh, this is mainly Super Monkey Ball Jr. from the Game Boy Advance. Uh, but, uh, I assume, I assume, uh, Nokia, who, who made the N-Gage, uh, kind of wanted games to be a little more like, oh man, this is like a console game on the go, so, instead of calling it Super Monkey Ball Jr., I think they might have asked Sega, like, can you just call it Monkey Ball? Yeah, there's a lot of really cool stuff that released on the N-Gage, at, at least, like, name-wise, you know, like, you had, like, Rayman, and, you know, Sonic, and the Tomb Raider, and all that stuff, Call of Duty, uh, there's a lot of cool stuff that released on it, you know, like, you know, brand, brand wise, but uh, a lot of the times, like, they weren't the greatest versions, but, uh, it, it's still cool. The, these are still really cool games to collect, in my opinion. Much like my latest obsession. Ooh, yes, I finally have a Neo Geo Pocket Color. Uh, this was, uh, one of, uh, SNK's kind of, uh, attempts at competing with the actual video game market. Uh, Neo Geo stuff is always kind of weird because, like, it, it often feels like it's in its own world. It's in its own realm. Uh, the Neo Geo uh, didn't fail, per se. It, it was always just kind of a very niche thing that was always just doing its own thing. Uh, you know, it, it lasted quite a long time. And uh, SNK tried to uh, enter the handheld market with uh, the Neo Geo Pocket and later the Neo Geo Pocket Color. And uh, they definitely tried. There was a lot of really interesting stuff. And they actually had a partnership with Sega. And uh, some Sega games released on here, like Sonic Pocket Adventure. And, uh, yeah, so you could kind of view this as a bit of a, a successor, a follow-up to the Sega Game Gear. And, honestly, what a follow-up, because this is such a cool, cute handheld. Honestly speaking, I think a lot of it is due to the thumbstick. It clicks. It's such a cool feeling. Like, it, it's just like, there, there's nothing else like the Neo Geo Pocket Color, you know? And it just, it, it feels really good. It, it looks really good, even though the screen isn't backlit. You know, like, I just turn it on, and I personally can view this really well. Obviously, it's harder for you to see, but for me in person, I, I can see the screen quite easily. And, uh, yeah, it's Sonic Pocket Adventure. Uh, IGN gave this game a 10. Yes, this is considered perfection. Listen, it's a good game. I don't understand how anybody could consider this perfection. Like, damn, I don't need food. I have this. But this is such- th this is a really cool game. Uh, this is pretty much like a, uh weird mixtape of like Sonic 2 with uh, Sonic 3 music with a little bit of like Sonic Adventure art in there. It's really weird, um, but uh, I think it's really cool to play on this thing, especially with the clicky thumbstick. This feels really good for Sonic. But yeah, I'm definitely interested in uh, getting some more Neo Geo Pocket games because uh, there's some cool stuff on this platform. You know, it, it's definitely not a necessary system for everybody to own, but it's a really cool one. I, I think easily, like, anybody who picks this up can kind of go, like, this is this is neat. This is a neat little handheld. So, yeah, that's just a handful of things that I bought for no particular reason recently, just because I'm kind of like, you know what, I, I kind of want this. Uh, I could have talked about how I bought uh, Sonic Jam on the Gamecom, uh, sealed. But, but, but I have a reason for it, be because I need it. 